Today's video is proudly sponsored by Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all the popular distributions, such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that lets you tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You could use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the platform of choice to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. In addition, Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get help from a live person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 towards your new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to talk about backgrounding and foregrounding tasks on the Linux command line. And this is something that's going to enhance your multitasking when it comes to the command line. I mean, I've seen a bunch of people, including myself when I first started, opening a bunch of terminals to the same server. Perhaps you have a bunch of different things going on, and that's fine, but it's not the most efficient way to use the terminal. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys some examples of backgrounding and foregrounding that I think are useful, and that'll help you understand the process. So let's get started. So to start us off, I'm going to execute a very simple command, sudo apt update. That command was fairly simple. It just updated the package sources for my server. And even though that's a Debian and Ubuntu specific command, the command itself doesn't really matter. What you just saw was a foreground task. So basically, I ran that command, and as you just saw, it produced output. In every video that I've done so far in this series, we've been working primarily with standard output as well as foreground jobs. I covered data streams in another video, so if you don't already know what that means, then I'll leave a card for that video right about here. This is a video that goes over data streams, and that'll tell you all about standard output and standard error if you don't already know what those terms mean. But in a nutshell, standard output is just output that's produced and shown in the terminal window. So the command that you just saw me run produced standard output. But anyway, we've been using foreground tasks up until now, and we've seemed to do pretty well without background tasks, so what exactly is a background task and what can it do for us? So to demonstrate why background and foreground is so awesome, I'll set up a quick example. First, what I'm going to do is install HTOP. It's just a quick example, not really specific to background and foreground, but it's easy to run. And HTOP itself is a very awesome resource monitoring utility, but it may not look like much because I have the font size cranked all the way up here. I generally increase the font size because I want to make sure that any of you out there that might be vision impaired won't have a problem seeing my content. But if I lower the font size, you can immediately see why HTOP is so awesome. But this isn't an HTOP tutorial. HTOP itself is just a very small utility that I can run to illustrate the example. And the scenario in general might go something like this. Maybe you're watching HTOP because someone is complaining that the server is running very slow. So what you want to do is just keep an eye on the RAM, the CPU usage and things like that. So that way you could catch the server red-handed if it slows down, perhaps you'll be able to see which process is actually using up all of the resources. While you're watching HTOP, perhaps somebody taps you on the shoulder and they want you to install a package. So what do you do? Well, one thing you can do is actually click right here where it shows quit, or you could just simply press F10, and then that takes you back to the terminal. So you can run sudo apt install, perhaps they want you to install Apache 2. So you run it, and then when you're done, you can just go back into HTOP. However, that's not the most efficient way to multitask with a terminal. What you could do instead is hold Control and then press Z, 
And as you can see, HTOP went away. And now that it's gone, I can run sudo apt install, and then whatever the name of the package is, I can install it, and then get back to HTOP. How do I get back to HTOP? Well, I can type fg, short for foreground, and as you can see, HTOP is back. I didn't actually exit HTOP at any point during this most recent example. I held Control and I pressed Z, and what that did was it sent HTOP to the background. Then I entered another command. Well, I actually didn't enter the command, but you saw me type an example command. And then I typed FG to bring HTOP to the foreground. Now, honestly, you could probably argue that there's not much in the way of time savings while using HTOP as an example. I mean, typing HTOP is only four characters. So that's only two more characters than the FG command itself. So let's see a more useful example. So what I'm going to do is just open up the SSH config file in a text editor. Now I'm using Vim and there's a specific reason why I'm using Vim for this example. You don't necessarily have to follow along though. But anyway, I'll press enter. And here I have the open SSH config file up on my screen. So maybe I'm going through this file. I want to secure OpenSSH. That's a great thing to do. And while I'm working on this, someone taps me on the shoulder and they ask me to do something else. Now, I haven't actually made any changes to this file at all whatsoever, but for this example, let's just assume that I've been working on this file and I've been changing configuration items here and I don't want to lose my work. But I also don't want to save the file either because I'm not done with it yet. I don't want to save an incomplete file especially an incomplete config file. So what do I do? I don't want to lose my changes, but I don't want to save my changes either. So as you could probably guess, I'll hold Control and press Z, and that sends Vim to the background. Now I could do whatever it was that that person wanted me to do, and I'm not going to lose my changes. Now, of course, I also shouldn't log out of the server before saving my changes, and the reason for that is backgrounding a process doesn't survive a logout of your shell, but as long as I don't log out, the file is in the background, it's still open, I could do whatever I need to do on the command line, and then I could type FG to bring that file back. So like I mentioned before, it's just simply FG to bring it back, and again, Control Z to send it to the background. Now as a quick aside, the reason why I didn't use Nano is because many distributions actually configure Nano to not allow backgrounding. I don't know why. It seems really silly to me. It does work here in Ubuntu the last time I tried it, but I tried it on CentOS, it doesn't work. It has something to do with how that particular package is configured. Again, I don't know why, it is what it is. That's why I used Vim in this example, because I wanted to show you guys the concept of having a text file open, sending it to the background, and bringing it back. Now another thing that we can do is actually add the ampersand symbol to the end of a command, and what that allows us to do is background that command right from the get-go. So for example, if I type htop, and then the ampersand, I'll press enter. I just get this number here. I never saw htop. What's going on here? Well, as you could probably guess, htop was sent to the background. And it was sent to the background immediately. But wait a minute. I already had a background task. I backgrounded the SSH config file, and now I backgrounded another application. So how do I see which jobs I have running in the background? And the answer to that is easy. We simply type the word jobs, and then we'll see a list of all the jobs that are running in the background in this session. As you can see here, I have two. And you know what? Just for fun, I'll start another one. So what I'm going to do is open up Vim, but this time I'm going to point it to a very specific file. And then what I'm going to do is add the ampersand symbol to immediately send it to the background. And now I have three tasks that are running in the background. So what happens when I type FG? I mean, we already know that that brings an app to the foreground, but which job is it actually going to bring to the foreground? And the answer is that it brought the most recently backgrounded task to the foreground. This is my bash RC file. And I was already playing around with it, as you can see, which is why the cursor actually started later on in the file. But you get the point. When you type FG for foreground, it's going to bring back the task that was most recently backgrounded. That's the one that's going to come to the foreground by default. But what if you want to bring back a very specific job? Well, that's actually easy. We could type FG and then the job ID that we want to foreground. 
And here we have a job ID. And here we have a job ID. And here we have a job ID. So we have those three job IDs right there. So all we need to do is refer to one of these. And that's how we choose which one we want to foreground. So let's go ahead and bring back the first one. So what I'll do is type number one. So FG and then one. And now the SSH config file is the one that was brought to the foreground. Of course, there's more to it than this, but as far as explaining background tasks and foreground tasks, that's pretty much it. Jobs that are running in the foreground are things that you can see running right before your eyes. And when it comes to background jobs, those are things that you can't see, since they're running in the background. But you can control what runs in the background and the foreground, which enables you to use the same command window for essentially everything. And in my opinion, that's certainly better than opening up 10 different terminal sessions to a single server. Of course, there's more to it when it comes to backgrounding and foregrounding, but I wanted to keep this video simple so that you guys can get some practice in. And I figured that showing a text editor and resource monitor that you can background and foreground would probably be the easiest way to drive home what background and foreground actually means when it comes to Linux. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful in teaching you guys backgrounding and foregrounding. It's one of those things that I wish I knew earlier in my career, and hopefully it's helpful to you guys as well. If you did find this video helpful, please click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.